What's up, New York Comic Con? My name is Ruth Kinane. I'm a writer with Entertainment Weekly, as you just heard, and I am from Scotland. I am, like you all, a huge Outlander fan, so this is just as exciting for me as it is for you guys. It's been a long Droughtlander, hasn't it? So let's not wait any longer. Let's get some people out here who can tell us all about season six. Sound good? First up, please give your loudest New York Comic Con cheer for writer Diana Gavaldon. <laughs> Next up, we have one of the most important people for bringing this story from the page to the screen. It is executive producer Meryl Davis. Now, joining us virtually from the UK, you know him as adventurous young Ian. Please give a loud applause for John Bell. Hello. <laughs> also joining us from the UK virtually is Outlander's favorite surgical apprentice, butcher and mother of three, Lauren Lyle. Hello. My goodness, this is so weird. <laughs> Naturally, we can have one without the other, so please give a big applause for the Ridge's resident Frenchman, Cesar Domboy. Hi, uh, guys. Hi, everybody. <laughs> oh, if I can see myself, it's so weird. Okay. <laughs> and now, here in person, make some noise for the main man, the most famous Scot since Macbeth, Sam Hewen. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and last, but certainly not least, please say hello to Outlander's leading lady and badass heroine, Katrina Valve. Hi, everybody! <laughs> wow. I think I speak for everybody here on the stage and virtually when I say that it is so, so good to be back at New York Comic Con, right? Yeah. <laughs> like I mentioned before, the Droughtlander was particularly long this time. Was it the longest? I feel like it was the longest. Yeah, let's say it was. Um, Mara, let's start with you. Can you talk a little bit about the weather this season and how that kind of affected filming and then you, the decision to sort of lean into it creatively? I mean, I feel like people get so tired of us talking about the weather. It's like weather, weather, weather. But it has become almost like a character in the show. I mean, this year was particularly difficult and every year is. I mean, Scotland is is a hard mistress, as they say. It's, um, this year, though, we were just hit by so much horrible weather and actually had to move some things inside at the last minute. And, and it's a show that wants to be outside and wants to take advantage of the landscape, the beauty that is Scotland, um, that obviously is North Car Plain, North Carolina. But um, I think this year was particularly tough um, for so many reasons. I mean, weather, COVID, it was tough for the actors, for the crew. It's always tough for the crew. And, um, you know, it's one of the reasons, obviously, that we shortened our season, because we just got hit really hard this year. I mean, shout out to the crew. That feels like their job was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, you know, with everything that's going on right now, I just do want to say how much our crew, how meaningful they are to us, how hard they work. We should all be taking care of our crews. They're amazing. Second that. So who on the cast complained the most about being cold? Or who started the most snowball fights? Guys, do you want to jump in there? Um, <laughs> I don't know, Cesar, you don't like the cold, do you? <laughs> oh, oh, yes, we had a good one, Kat, this year. Huh? We, we had a pretty snowy scene, didn't we? Yes, yeah, I thought I knew cold, and then I met this day of shooting. But you know what? Thanks to you, we were optimists that they were we, yeah? And that, that's what <laughs> yeah. I turned something. You, you, you didn't moan once. Ah, <laughs> uh, sorry, what? I can't hear nothing, you, the connection nothing. is so bad. <laughs> can't tell who's lying here. <laughs> I mean, pretty fitting, Diana, then, that is based on a book named the, A Breath of Snow and Ashes. What are you most excited to see from that book come to life in season six, or for the fans to see? 
Uh, ooh, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that you will be excited about. But I think what you will most appreciate is are the Christie family. Boo. <laughs> Boo, hiss. Other than that, you know, there are the usual. I mean, yeah. And, uh, and, uh, the usual. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Well, it's never easy, right? Oh, mountains, snow, you know, things like that. Very usual in Scotland. Well, let's talk about the new kids on the ridge, the Christie family. Sam, Tom has been a nemesis or somebody that Jamie knows from his past. How disruptive is he about to be on the ridge? Yes, without giving away too much, but <clears throat> we have this family, the Christies, that uh, arrive at the ridge. And they, they initially um, are integrated into the new community. But uh, very soon we start to see a lot of the, the history that's been between Tom and Jamie really get under the skin of, of, of everyone and it starts to sort of disintegrate or, disintegrate or decay um, what Claire and Jamie have built at Fraser's Ridge. So they're, they're fantastic. I mean, Mark Lewis Jones is just incredible. Alex, um, Jessica, they're just, they're such a weird little family um, <laughs> on and off screen. So you're gonna, you're gonna love and you're gonna hate them. Do you ever wish that Jamie would kind of just put his honor aside and not be such a good guy and be like, do you know what, you're not welcome on my ridge? Yeah, like everyone's welcome at the ridge except for you. Um, but unfortunately, yes, Jamie is a man of his word and has invited you know, people from Ardsmuir or Scotsman uh, to come and uh, settle at Fraser's Ridge. So it, it really is uh, something that he has to work hard to, to, to integrate them into their new way of life. Got to respect it, I guess. Um, Katrina, how was working with Mark Lewis Jones for you? I feel like he would be a lot of fun between takes. Oh my God, he's great. Um, I mean, he's such a fantastic actor, but I think he had Sam and I uh, in stitches the most. Um, there was a, you know, there might be a little operation that Claire has to do on uh, Tom, <laughs> and and Mark was just so funny. I mean, I think, I yeah. Sam kept breaking every time we were doing it because he would just be like, oh, Jesus, oh, God. <laughs> um, but no, they're, they're great. They're, it's such a good dynamic having him and um, Jessica Reynolds as well is so lovely and Alex, obviously. And yeah, it's just a nice new dynamic to bring onto the ridge. Nice to get some new people in there, I'm sure, as well on set. Yeah. Um, Diana, it's cool for you as well to see these characters that you've come up with years ago and you know so well and then see them cast. How is that experience? Oh, it's fabulous. Yeah, no, to start with, I looked at each one of them and I was going, you're kidding. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, not out, of, wigs are far. not out of any objection to what they looked like. I mean, just that they didn't look like, you know, the, the people I've been living with for 30 years. But, you know, why should they? And in fact, I've been absolutely thrilled at the way they metamorphose into exactly those people. So it's just fascinating to watch in, in all its aspects, but particularly seeing just what an actor or actress can do just with their faces. I mean, it's remarkable. I saw one faint little clip, someone on set took it of you, from season one, and it's during the flogging scene, and it was during a break, so you were, you were wearing your normal face, and uh, then they... they <laughs> said, you know, set, and you can see it. It took, like, one second... Zam, he's right back there. You know, tortured Jamie right in the flesh. I was going, what? <laughs> but yeah, no, it's amazing. So That's what we pay Sam and Katrina and all the rest of the big bucks for. That's right. Our acting faces are, um, yes. are remarkable. Well earned, I think. <laughs> um, Meryl, so last season we saw Bree and Roger try to return to the future and fail. What are, how are they kind of feeling now? Are they like a bit more settled? Roger especially was kind of eager to leave. I think he made it. He's not here. <laughs> yeah, he's, ar <laughs> he's already left. Richard? Spoiler alert. I know, Sophie and Richard are both not here. Curious. Um, I mean, I think they have settled in. I mean, as much as one can settle in in Outlander. Um, obviously, we know crazy things will happen, but I think they have kind of realized that this is their home now and, and they're going to make their best effort to fit in there. I think this season is all about, for each of them, figuring out their place on the ridge. Um, Roger obviously has so many skills that he brought with him that aren't necessarily transferable to this life. So he's st still struggling with that. And the same with, with um, uh, Bree. She's 
you know, she's got an engineering background, and it's like, how can she make that work in this time and give herself a purpose? She's a mother, and that is a purpose, but she also wants something a little more for herself. So we're going to see that journey for both of them this season. Did I hear something about a well being built? Say, say a well again. doesn't... A well? Yeah, does Brie not help build She uh, designs the oh, well, well yes. I think. Uh, that's a spoiler. Yeah, exactly. That's why I was like, what? It, what? No, she, there's no well. Yeah. I made that I up. Don't I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. It goes down and brings up whiskey. It's just... A Scottish well. Yes. <laughs> Which is a nice segue into, into Cesar and his uh, journey. Yes. Oh, with whiskey? Cesar? A... Lots of drinking yeah. this season? Yeah. Yeah, 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 there's a bit of uh, Fergus liking to try his own product, if I may, this season. So you can see him um, actually struggling and deciding like to uh, drink uh, his way out of sadness, um, I could say. But yeah, um, the whiskey will is not going well, if I may. I well, I mean, he has, what, three kids under five? You kind of can't blame him for struggling. <laughs> That's true. How does he even have time for anything else? Um, yes, he's got loads of time because I'm always looking after all the kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's not Amen. I'm, hard, I'm working hard for this family. Okay, <laughs> okay Lauren? So, yeah, 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 love you, love you, love you. Yeah, love yeah. you too. Yeah, 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 sure, sure, yeah. <laughs> Lauren, I have to say that Marcely is probably my favorite character on the show. No offense to anybody else. <laughs> she has Same. the best banter, you know right? What? Same. <laughs> I feel like I see so many tweets just like praising her every week after a new episode comes out. What is a compliment you get often about the character or something that surprises you that people really connect with? Uh, the biggest compliment I get is that loads of people name their cats Marsley, so I get regular messages of kittens <laughs> called Marsley. So that's always great, obviously. Um, and normally people just love that she's a bit outspoken and says what she thinks and has no filter. And I feel like Outlander fans often are the same, so we all relate to that same trait. <laughs> she's such a great character. Um, do we see her continue to kind of learn the medical trade with Claire this season as well? Yeah, to an extent. You um, you kind of catch Marcy and probably, I would say Marcy and Ferguson quite a dark, uh, sort of the darkest place they've been in. Me and Sez always think that we're like the cool, fun couple that like never fight. And yeah. maybe there's one or two fights this season and Marcy's slightly more run off her feet and has a lot like I say the kids are all on hand there's a lot more to do uh she's got a bit more uh responsibility and so sometimes there's less time to be the apprentice and more time to be uh, the mother okay well speaking of dark yeah. times John we saw young Ian in a pretty dark headspace last season how is he doing when we catch back up we catch up with him this season yeah we catch up with young Ian of course that was quite a he went through an emotional time. He's been through the ringer, bless him. Um, but now he's, I think, a little bit more mature, um, a bit more grown. I think you're going to see that side of him because he's not afraid now to really stand up for what he believes in, having had all of these amazing life experiences beforehand. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited for you guys to see a little bit more of maybe what happened to Ian or... Um, and how he's going to use that knowledge, of course, of what happens in the future to um, inform his decisions right now. Interesting. Um, I wanted to ask uh, Meryl this about uh, Roger and Bree. So we saw that they obviously have one kid. Is there any more arrivals on the horizon? Anything you can tease? I mean, I feel like why we're asking so many spoilers. Um, <laughs> I mean, there may. I mean, triplets, who knows? I mean, they could have a variety of, of children. They could take one of Marsley and Fergus's 20 kids. Please do. Um, Please do. I mean, I feel like Marsley is bringing home the bacon and frying it up in a pan. She's doing so much. Um, I mean, we might, we, we may, we may not. Okay, fair enough. I mean, Laura... They are certainly trying. Let's put it that way. They are trying. Sounds like Outlander. <laughs> Um, Lauren, I bet that you were fed up of wearing the pregnancy suit, though. That thing does not look particularly comfortable. 
Yeah, you get weirdly, like, very attached to it. I end up sitting and just, like, stroking my bump quite often. And everyone, like, kind of does treat you a little bit like you're pregnant. And the only good thing about it is that you don't have to wear... When it's that big, like, I'm so pregnant most of the time. It's not, like, a small baby. It yeah. always seems to be you catch me. It's absolutely enormous. And so you don't have to wear the corset at that point. And then the boys, like... Do you know what? Cesar, to his credit, hasn't done this. But... Richard and Sam think it's always really funny to come up and like punch the tummy. That's not and true. I don't know That's why a lie. Do that. <laughs> but Cesar's a, a sensitive soul, and it's his child in there, so he tends it's not to do that. I, think he knows I, I really that believe. I really believe yeah. there's our kid there. You know, I could yeah. never punch. <laughs> <laughs> I wait for you to give birth, and, yeah, then punch, exactly. and then I punch them. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, it's easy to take Marcy off at the end of the day because I quite literally take her off at the end of the day. So it's nice. Yeah. <laughs> they end up being small too, like Germain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's always really weird because I am like five foot three. And so to have like a five foot three person that's like enormous. And I, when I say it's not just the bump, there's like other elements that happen to you when you are pregnant that they give me and I wear. So you shed like swollen feet or something? <laughs> uh, higher. <laughs> swollen feet. <laughs> Shoes. Um, I feel like for season seven, we're gonna have a very special episode where the guys are pregnant for a few episodes. Yeah. Like a dream yeah. sequence or something. Yeah, cool. Cat's nightmare. I shall name my bump <laughs> Marsley. <laughs> nice tribute. Um, Sam, at the end of season five, we also saw Jamie kill a lot of men to avenge Claire. Um, <clears throat> how has that kind of changed how the men on the ridge perceive him back in his community, or has it? I think, you know, uh, Jamie and Claire have spent a lot of time building this community, and I think this is the season where we see that really disintegrate. Um, yeah, Jamie, you know, he went to, to, to save Claire, but I think you know, obviously she hasn't gotten over that trauma, I think, and I think Jamie's very aware of it. You know, he's, he's keeping an eye on her, and I think these cracks are really starting to show, um, not only for Jamie and Claire, but for the rest of the, the, the inhabitants of Fraser's Ridge. You know, the, the, the war is coming. Um, it always seems to be coming, but it is coming. And um, <clears throat> we're very aware, and, and Jamie's really having to tread a, a fine line between his loyalties. You know, he knows he's on the wrong side, the British, and uh, at some point he is going to have to switch sides, but um, it, it really is, it, it's even harder this season for him because he's being pulled in both directions. It's just never easy. I want them just to go to Hawaii, chill on the beach. I know, nice. I think they should move to Hawaii or something, like just you can find a ship. go and, go and relax. Yeah, Fraser's Ridge is not a, a very happy place, it's and it's chill. freezing. <laughs> um, Katrina, given the fallout of her Dr. Rawlings column last season, how is Claire kind of navigating her medical attentions? Is she taking a step back or is she, can she kind of not do that? She can't help herself but help. Um, I think she's not intentionally taking a step back really, but I think, you know, given what happened at the end of last season, I think for the first time, you know, Claire's always been so good at compartmentalizing everything and she sort of puts a lid on things and moves on. But I think this is the first time she can't suppress something and this is the first time where she really has to deal with what happens and, and we see her maybe be a little bit destabilized. And so um, that bleeds into, I think, every aspect of her life. So as much as she wants to continue on as if nothing had happened, and as Sam said, you know, Jamie is so aware of it, he's watching her. And I think everybody is much more aware of what's going on with Claire than she is um, until it becomes sort of too much and she has to sort of deal with it. But yeah, it, it's, it has an effect on every aspect of her life and, and definitely about, you know, her, her life as a, as a healer doctor. Seems like it's gonna be a very intense eight episodes. <laughs> but on the flip side of that, was there anybody when you were on the cast when you were filming that you, something happened and you were like, this is absolutely going on the blooper reel for season six? I mean, there was ice. Someone had to fall at some point, right? 
I struggle. I can never remember that far back. But, yeah, um, but just saying about it being intense, you know, the episode, I know the first episode is extended. Um, and I think it just, it just gives so much more time for the characters to develop and for us to learn as an audience more about their situation. And I think, you know, Outland is always moving and, and um, it, just feels, it feels really nice to just sit with the characters a bit more this season. And yeah, it just, it just really builds from, from the very first episode. So cool. So something that's always kind of in the back of my mind stressing me out a little bit when I'm watching is that Brie traveled back in time because she was worried her parents were going to die in a fire. There's all these candles. Everywhere. And, yeah, and just like a, a fire. Like, <laughs> they go it, to bed and they're still lit. That's it's not like okay. Guys, you do not get the memo. <laughs> I, I don't it, want to give away a spoiler, but it, you know, Brie may also add to that this season. Oh, great. Uh, <laughs> which uh, I'm beginning to suspect her, actually. <laughs> She traveled back in time to save everyone, but also start the fire. And burn them to death. <laughs> um, Meryl, we saw you guys make some fun choices last season with the Thanksgiving episode and then also the silent episode. Do you get to do anything this season similar or no time? Um, I mean, I don't think we have, you know, I don't think there's anything specific. I mean, I was thinking fun if we have a fun episode. And um, I don't know if I'd ever call Outlander fun. Yeah, I don't um, that well. There are so many uh, traumatic things this season. I think because it's so packed also, and there's so much in this book that there's such a, a journey of trauma for so many characters. Um, I, there's no very special episode of Outlander that I, I can point to like that, but we have a lot of interesting, amazing episodes this year that are, it's hard for me to pick my favorite this year, I would say. Um, you know, it's just kind of starts off with a bang and it just kind of continues and everyone has some amazing stuff. I mean, you know, Claire and, and Jamie, um, you know, uh, Fergus and Marsley have this amazing story this year. Um, you know, John Bell, young Ian has an, a great story. So, I mean, I just think there's just something for everyone this season, and it's really intense and really packed, as Sam said. I mean, it's just, we filmed eight episodes, but it seemed like 20. I feel like everyone's just so ready for those to be here. <laughs> okay, we're going to do a quick lightning round of questions for the cast. All you have to do is raise your hand if the statement I read applies to you. If you feel like you want to shame your castmates and point to them or say their name, you can also do that. Oh, God, oh, God. <laughs> Let's just all point at Sam all the time. Also, yeah. remember Richard <laughs> and Sophie aren't here, so you can just throw them under the bus. Um, okay, so have you ever taken a nap on set somewhere that you shouldn't have? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, Katrina all the time, I'm sure. I mean, do we get to I... find out the answers, though? Like, where? Oh, I mean... If anyone wants to share. Normally the surgery, isn't it? The surgery bed, or season two, it used to be the, the Claire had that day bed, you know, the hidden one. I used to hide in there all the time and go for a little nap. It's great. I had a really lovely nap once. Um, I just, I got called back to come back from Glastonbury. And I'd been at Glastonbury, the fest, music festival in England for four days. And I got called back early and I arrived on set having not slept for five, four or five days. And um, we went into a field, and at one point I got, I just heard shouting, and I didn't know what was going on, and I had zipped myself up, like full up. In a I posted jacket. a picture of that. Yeah, yeah. So it's got it's the locust. It's the when we were attacked by the yeah. locust. That's and that I just, day. I just like on yeah. a field, like in the middle of the long grass, and no one could find me. And there's a really good photo <laughs> of me, just like a little tube in the field. <laughs> Finally getting some sleep. It was great. Super cozy, super cozy picture. I'll be posting on my story right now. <laughs> Make sure you check people that out. the Comic Con. Yeah. Okay, amazing. Have you ever slipped out of accent during a scene? For those of you who have accents. <laughs> I, I had to do accents. the accent recently on something and um, on an audiobook, and I'd I've forgotten. I can't remember. I can't remember how to do Jamie. So if anyone can remind me, that would be great. <laughs> Anybody want to try in the audience? Anyone want to try? No? Okay. I kind of want to hear Katrina yeah, do Jamie a Jamie, Jamie impression. Goes, Jamie's, it's like, it's this. I we all know it's Smolder. We all know the... <laughs> 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 is that the... I can't hear you. <laughs> so is that the tartan steel? Mm, uh-huh. Not the blue steel, the tartan steel. There is a thing about Sam, though. Sam, I don't know if you know this. We have a thing where a few of us... I remember when I first started on Outlander, 
you have a face that you do as Jamie that I'm never quite sure if you Ms. are. Mr. what is yeah, the yeah, face? I'm never quite sure if you're about to corpse or if you're Jamie. And it's this kind of like smile. You've got this kind of like. No. <laughs> yes. Diana is right. Side you smile. Faces, you have that one smile that you share with Jamie that also yeah. Sam does. That's true. Yeah. Right. They can help you get back into character. Can't wait to see you guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Have you ever called Diana to ask for character details? Emailed, for sure. Email. Emailed and, and tweet, tweeted you. We, we talk a lot on private Twitter. Tweet, tweeter. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you ever complained about an itchy wig? Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Constantly. <laughs> Fair enough. Especially in midges. When the season. midges get underneath yeah. your wig, it's, in the it's damp. Up. Yeah. Awful. Yeah. They were, they were pretty bad, weren't they? I mean, John, yeah. John probably has the opposite problem, right? Don't you have to shave your head? I do, yeah. But I mean, I would get, sometimes I would get itchy and then I would like start like whipping my, my wig back and forth. And I can remember <laughs> one day I was getting really into some Kylie Minogue in the makeup trailer. <laughs> And as I whipped my head back, my scalp lock thing went flying across the entire makeup trailer. <laughs> Much to Annie, our heads of makeup's order. I love that it's Kylie like Minogue that gets him into character. It's like a little animal in your head. A little haggis. Yeah. See, this is what belongs on the blooper reel I was talking about. I want to see this. Um, have you ever had a disaster with an onset animal? I feel like John again, maybe. Well, it wasn't um, a disaster, but there was this donkey. You know, it was very recalcitrant. <laughs> the dog? What about the dog? It seems to be a... I feel like, like Rolo just is a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> but he's our disaster. A cute disaster. <laughs> um, um, I think it can be quite difficult when you're trying to, like, ride a horse and also control a dog at the same time. So you're on the horse, like, go, 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 but you want Rolo to stay, but he's going. You go, no, stop, Rolo, and the horse stops. So it's, it's a lot. Isn't, it, isn't that his job? <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Amazing. Um, have you ever done push-ups before a shirtless scene? You can just raise your hand if you want. I don't have shirtless scenes. Who's got <laughs> Neither. <laughs> Never. Cat, Cat does pump a few out now and then. I, I do it all the time. You know, you just are calling me for those scenes and you just, there I am in my trailer doing so many. Sam never does, ever, ever. No, he hates it. <laughs> Actually, uh, didn't you do uh, some recently, Cesar? Like one, one time? What? <laughs> I think oh, you're yeah, looking kind of buff. Don't what? we all think? He looks a bit buff, doesn't he? <laughs> he looks good. But well, thanks to your trainer, baby. Shirtless Fergus next season? Shirtless Fergus <laughs> next season. Uh, the actor's ready. <laughs> Perfect. Um, have you ever responded to a negative review online under a pseudonym? Yeah, screw them, <laughs> assholes. Wait, 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 I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna... That's me there in the field. Is. There she is. Big oh my gosh, Putting the photo. Sorry, screw you, Boozy, that day. Sorry about that. Everybody check Cesar's Instagram stories after the panel. Um, have you ever flirted with a fan? <laughs> they want. <laughs> How do you point towards Sam? Which way is he? <laughs> <laughs> we don't get to meet fans, but now we can. It's so good to be back. Yeah. Have you ever flirt with every one of you? <laughs> Form an orderly queue. Have you ever declared, do you know who I am in a restaurant? <laughs> It's horrible. I hope not. We're staying that. humble, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, have you ever gotten into trouble with the police under embarrassing uh, circumstances? Oh. <laughs> um, how recently are we talking? <laughs> In your entire lifetime. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I, mean oh. I mean, we have talked about ah. Katrina's bad driving skills a lot, but... Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I've met a few traffic cops in my time, but other than that, <laughs> fair enough. Happy. Well, I was once stopped by the police on a street in San Diego. I was just walking, and they demanded to see my ID, and I said, 
okay, but why? And they said, well, you look like the 16-year-old runaway that we're looking for. <laughs> It's going, no, I'm just short. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, amazing. Okay, have you ever feigned excitement when a friend of yours got cast in a really huge movie or TV show? No, I'm always happy for them. No. Yeah, no, you're always excited for them. Yeah. We're good people. So I didn't do so I'm joking. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, have you ever wished this line of questioning was over? <laughs> We're good people. And it, and it is. Thoughts. <laughs> Apologies. Okay, so I really want to get to the audience questions, but before we do that, we're going to play a Wii game that you guys get to be a part of. So um, if you want to line up the mics or whatever, the, yeah, um, you will get the chance to win some Outlander swag, so definitely get involved. So basically, each of the panelists is going to read a, a oh, very wow. Scottish-sounding expression, and if you can decipher what it means... You win a swag bag. Try. Where are my questions? Accents are optional Wait, where are my for the cast. <laughs> what, am I supposed to remember this thing? Yeah, I, don't, I, don't. I don't learn lines. I think we've all learned that. <laughs> do you want to start with you, John? <laughs> John, do you know yours? Start with me? Yeah, let's do yours. I first. think I do, yeah. I'm always prepared. Right, okay. What does this mean? New York! Let's get mad with So whoever is first at the mic can take a guess at what they think it means. Oh, I know what it is. <laughs> I'm never going to do mine. <laughs> or you can let the person behind you go if you don't Oh, know. I'm ready. Okay, what, do um, you know what John's... So John said a phrase. Do you know what it means? I didn't hear him. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. John, you want to do it one more time? Come on, New York. Let's get mad with it. I don't, I don't understand. I'm sorry. I don't understand. Come, come on, New York. Let's get mad with it. Do you want to take any kind of guess? You're going to win a prize. <laughs> Mets. The Mets game? Okay, no. <laughs> okay. Mets. Sam, what does it mean? Come on, New York. It says, come on, New York. Let's, let's, give, let's have a great time and get crazy. Let's get mad with it. Let's get mad with it. <laughs> and Diana, do you want to try yours? Away for a gear hid in your hands to play with. Sam, do you want to take a guess on this side of the room? And what it means? Well, you better get away or I'm going to knock your head off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, your guys' Give accents are so prize. good. <laughs> your American accents are so good. <laughs> um, who's next? Lauren, do you want to go next? Uh, yeah, what was mine? Um, uh, if you're no an Outlander fan, away and boil your heat. Sam, date the mic, have a guess. Or in the audience? Don't lose your head. Don't lose your head? Yeah. What? Be gone with you was their answer. Yeah, I feel like we can give you the swag bag for that. It is quite literally boil your head. But <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Like, it's, it's less barbaric, your version. <laughs> um, Cesar, do you want to do yours? Oh, you're out your face, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, baby! Friendly yeah, in! Let's go with you there in the yellow mask. Yeah, you've had too much to drink. Good. Very good. She wins. Oh, I answered it. Uh, Katrina, do you want to do yours? Sure. Uh, Get Laddie. And everybody? They can't hear anybody. I wanted to ask a question. This is super good. No. Let's just give them the swag yeah, bag. Give them the swag anyway. Yeah. 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 All right, Marilyn, you want to do yours? I mean, thankfully, they gave me the easiest one. Um, it's a very Dreek day. It's raining. It's just like today. It's nasty out. Perfect. Okay, Sam, we'll end on you. Oh, that's it's nasty out. <laughs> season six is going to be a pure belter. Uh, yes, you're right. That's yeah, take, take the back. Swag for everyone. <laughs> If you look under your seat. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and start the audience Q&A, guys. Okay. Hi, this is everybody. My name is Kathy. I'm from New York. I adore you guys. Um, so out of all the skills you've learned throughout the series, horseback riding, sword play, shinty, doctoring, axe, knives, butchering animals, language, etc., uh, which was the most difficult to make look realistic, and how comfortable were you with it, and do you use any of these skills in your everyday life? 
know. Good question. <laughs> Katrina. Uh, um, okay, the most difficult one to make uh, look real and to learn, and I learned it, and then I had it, and then I completely forgot it the next season, is the one-handed stitch that they do as a surgeon. That's difficult. I mean, it's got to be the most difficult thing a surgeon does, you know. <laughs> it's a joke. I made a joke. <laughs> the thing is, everyone in the audience doesn't realize that we can't hear any reaction nice. when we're speaking. I, I, I don't know, I'm just reaching out to the ether. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> Want to go to the next question? Anybody else? No, nothing? Hi, I'm Jennifer Hi. from New York. Um, since there's been such a long period of time between uh, seasons, is, did you lose the, um, your mannerisms, the accent, and is it harder for you to get back into character since you've done other projects? So I, I'll, I'll jump in here. I think, um, I don't know, I think we've been doing it for quite a while now that you know, once you're back on set, and even though this was slightly different circumstances, especially with COVID and all the protocols, but like, after you've been back for like half a day, you're like, oh, I've, I've, it's like you never went away. And um, yeah, I was saying the other day, I was kind of couldn't remember my accent, but, but I think once, you know, you put all the clothes on and you're back with everyone and there was so much prep involved as well, which is great. You know, all the directors come on board and we get time with them uh, and with the writers too. So, um, yeah, it just feels like wearing, I don't know, an old glove or something. You just slip back into it. An old glove. An old glove. <laughs> a very old <laughs> ginger <laughs> glove. Yes. Yes. Or a ginger wig. Anybody else struggle to get back into character after time off? No, but I think it's like Sam said. I think sometimes you're apprehensive and you think as you're going into it, you're like, oh, God, I don't remember what I, what I do and how am I going to get this? And as soon as you put the costume on or as soon as you get your wig on, it just clicks in, you know. Or the hand. wooden hand. Hi, um, I'm Felicia, I'm from Brooklyn. Um, I had a question. So Jamie delivers uh, Lionel to his brother Richard um, in the final episode. Are we gonna see Lionel, um, sorry, Richard seems to make a little bit of a threat to him. Are we gonna see that kind of come full circle this season? Ah. <laughs> yes, so in the last episode, last season, you see that uh, Jamie, you know, returns with Lionel's body and uh, has sort of uh, seeked out revenge for what happened to Claire. And uh, I mean, I think it's, it's pretty clear that, that this is only the beginning of an even bigger, uh, deeper uh, animosity between the two. Um, the Browns are very dangerous and, and Richard is, is extremely, um, uh, extremely dangerous man so, and very powerful as well. So yes, I think is the short answer. You're going to see. You're going to see a lot more of the Browns, and they're not. They're not very nice people. Thank you. There's Claire in the front row. Hi, Claire. I'm I'm Aunt Jocasta. Oh yes, it was the wig. I should have realized. Ooh. Hi, Auntie. Sorry, I didn't recognize you with the mask on. <laughs> Has anyone seen Ulysses? My question is, with the COVID protocols, what were some kind of production, directing decisions, scripting decisions that you had to change to accommodate all the precautions you had to take? I mean, this is a hard show because I do know some shows completely revamped for COVID. We don't have the kind of show that you can completely do differently. I mean, obviously, if it was a perfect world, there'd be no interaction between the characters, you'd have two people in the scene, et cetera, et cetera. We couldn't really do that with this show. So, you know, obviously we tried as best we could to limit the amount of people in scenes. It was, as the actors know, really hard because once again, there are scenes that just call for more people. So it was kind of a every scene, every day, every week, kind of a recalculating of how many people can we have here safely. Um, we had a COVID, testing station at our facility to make sure everyone was safe. Um, you know, I think we did the best we could in, in the face of pretty difficult circumstances. And obviously, you know, as you all know, wearing masks, no one likes to do that, but everyone did. And I'm really proud of how we did this season that we got out of there without, you know, um, we had no COVID on set. You know, we did a really good job and, and um, 
a huge thank you to our production crew for doing that and the actors for hanging in there and, and everybody. It was, it was challenging. Hi, my name's Lynn and I'm from upstate New York. Uh, woo, peaker, Northeast Peaker. <laughs> Do you know when season six will air and when season seven will start filming? And I'm planning a trip to Scotland next year, so I want to coordinate. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I know, but I'm not allowed to tell you. Oh, come on. Um, I can say, like the teaser said, it'll be early 2022. Um, we are already in the room on season seven, and season seven will start shooting next year. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Nicole from Jersey, Garden State speaker, actually. <laughs> um, congratulations to Katrina on her on her baby. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Um, so, how did this work this year with hiding the bump? Did you guys have to? do a lot of creative camera angles or your amazing costume team, did they have to come up with a way to try to hide the bump and everything? I mean, I'll have um, Katrina start off with this one. <laughs> oh, well, Trisha did an amazing job. I think um, Trisha really kind of worked with getting the costumes early, sort of slightly bigger looking and uh, more voluminous so that we could hide things under. Um, you know, I, I do think it was a little bit difficult. We have an amazing camera crew, but they're all men. And so sometimes they don't see things the way a woman would see it. And so sometimes you'd be shooting a scene and you'd be like, can you see, should I be hiding this or should I be standing somewhere else? And they're like, oh, no, no, you're fine, you're fine. And then, um, yeah, I don't think I was always fine. But uh, this is where I pass over to Meryl because I think, you know, there's a little bit of work in the post that's being done, but... Um, yeah. I mean, honestly, I think no matter what we do, now people know, I think people will be looking for it. Do you know what I mean? So even, you know, certainly, and we filmed out of order, so honestly, you guys might think sometimes, and we didn't, and we might use some creative solutions to try to fix some things, but she looked amazing throughout, and, and it all works. It's incredible. I have to say, just to be shooting through winter during COVID and also being pregnant, I think uh, Katrina did an incredible, incredible yeah, job. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lisa. I'm one of the Supernova girls. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sam, you once said at an interview with RCS that if um, you don't get a job, that the character is wrong for you. Since you did get the job, how did you know the character was right for you? And particularly because you play a character over so many seasons and years, how does that character continue to be right for you? Wow, so that's a good question. I guess, I mean, I, you know, I was completely, I guess, naive about the job. And um, I just, when I remember reading for the first time, um, it just felt like I knew this character, um, probably down to Diana's fantastic writing. I think that, that the audition scenes were directly from the book, almost. Um, I remember there was a lot of them as well. It was about 20 pages or something. I'm like, geez. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It just, I just felt like I knew this, this character. And what's so amazing about Outlander is, I said it before, it, it's constantly changing, you know. Uh, he was a young Highlander and now he's, you know, this grandfather and it's a completely different situation that we're in now in, in North America. And I think just going on this journey has been, has been fantastic. But um, yeah, I, I love playing Jamie. He's such a, a, a great character to play. And yeah, thanks to Diana for, for writing such an incredible <laughs> book series. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to interrupt really quickly with a Twitter question and then we'll come back to you. Um, Sarah G4141 on Twitter asks... Will Adzo make any appearances in season six? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. All right, Sarah, there you go. I think Adzo's in it more, actually. I've he has, like, a, a title in the main credits now. He's in it that much. <laughs> <laughs> we all fight over who gets to hang out with Adzo when he's on set. Unlike Rolo, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rolo. No, he gets stuck with me. <laughs> 
Hi, I'm Bridget. I'm from New Jersey. And um, I actually work at a whiskey bar, so this question is going Ooh. to be about the whiskey. Um, so Ooh. obviously on set, you can't drink actual whiskey. In no, the we would never do that. We can't. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 do you can't. actually no. do no. that sometimes? This cast never drinks. Never. <laughs> I'll just say that that drinking scene in season five was extremely authentic. <laughs> it was method. <laughs> when when so you guys nasty. drink whiskey, like, and it's not actual whiskey, what is it made out of? Like, is it iced tea or something? Oh, that sounds nice. Should we ask for it's, iced tea uh, next time? Yeah. We should get, uh, no, it's usually just water with a color, with a dye in it, right? Yeah, that yeah. has this, the taste of the, the little thing it's in, you know, a little steel. It's not so bad. The red wine yeah. is usually grape juice. And after, if you, if you end up drinking red wine for the full scene, you end up with like purple lips and purple teeth. And it's really <laughs> not good. Nice. Well, and also, what is your favorite type of whiskey other than Sassanac, of course? Well, thank you for that nice plug. Yes. <laughs> Available now, actually. Uh... <laughs> What's your favorite whiskey, Sassanac, guys? Sassanac, obviously, yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, just, I mean, I've never tried it, um, as far as I can remember. <laughs> Wait, Sassanac. he didn't send you a bottle, bottle yet? No, nah, I never got a bottle. Uh, it's in the post. Ooh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm Lindley, and I live in New York, and um, I was inspired to start sewing because of Outlander, so I wanted to ask um, everyone in the cast, what has been your favorite costume to wear from any season? Uh, I'll go first then. Um, I think one of my absolute favorites was Christian Dior look from season two. Yeah. Um, but to rival it, I think my coat in this season, I have the most stunning big coat and Trisha did such an amazing job and it's so cool. And it's the kind of thing I just wanted to wear offset. Either that or Cesar's coat. I want to steal that one too. <laughs> mm. um, for me, it was probably uh, in season season five where uh, Young Ian has his, um, his tailor-made green velvet suit. You don't get to see it much, but it was, uh, it was a look. I was, I was, I was serving that day. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I, but I like the, um, you like your bonnet. You know, I <laughs> love the bonnet. Yeah, they're the best. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't fought for having less of them at all. Um, I actually used to really not like I, I remember in season three, really not being able to get used to the corset, but there was one, my like, first ever dress we wore for the doldrums episode. Um, it was just like a really beautifully made, really beautifully tailored bodice. It was really simple and kind of gray almost, um, with a little hat with the green. It's like the emoji that you get on, on iPhones. <laughs> yeah, the green yeah. banner, the hat, it's like the hat I got. Um, yeah, I remember so I us for the governor's ball too. We were, yeah. we were oh, in that yeah. shape. Yeah. The one actually that is my total favorite though is the yellow dress with the white knee-high boots from season five from the yeah. dream sequence. That felt, oh, that yeah, was really yeah. nice. I of course, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you like your costume then, Seth? Did you like your nah, I prefer the governor's ball, it's funnier. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. As far as I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, hi, my name is Max. Uh, I'm originally from Texas, and over the course of the series, what stands out as one of the most unifying bonding experiences among the cast and crew? Ooh, um, God, I don't know. I think I think it's honestly there's no specific one, but I think it's just being together. You know, I think from season one we had such um, a strong core ensemble and it was really something very new but but each season we bring it there's new actors coming in and and now it feels you know it's it's so nice to have this family and um, and I think this season in particular you get to see the family we get to discover more about each character and, and their relationship and what's going on so um, but it's always fun the scenes when we're all together are completely um, mm. uh, just they're chaotic I mean everyone is <laughs> high on life and uh, I'm sure the crew hate it when we're all together um, yeah. but it's 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 always such fun and there's a lot of corpsing that goes on I would say this season strangely even though 
you know, we, we all had to wear masks and we didn't get to sort of do the hanging out as much as we normally would. But there was something about the fact that I guess, you know, outside of work, we were all in lockdown. And I think the crew and all of us cast bonded probably more this season than perhaps we have in the last few Awesome, thank you. I'm going to jump in with one more from Twitter. Um, Mallory Stull asks, for everyone, what is one word to describe season six? We can just go down the line if you want to start, Diana. Oh, fabulous. It's, a, it's one of my favorite seasons right after season one. <laughs> Meryl? Uh, I'd say traumatic. Oh, no. That's why yeah. it's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, I think... I think I was going to say intense, but I think that's quite similar. So maybe I'd say like extended somehow. Even though there's less episodes, it, fe it feels like, as Meryl said earlier, that it feels like there's more. Katrina? I'm going to say unraveled for a lot of characters. Love that. Yeah. Cesar? Healing for Fergus and for Mawasley too. Healing, yeah. Nice. Lauren? Some are like intimate, I would say. There's a lot of... Um, intimacy well, for like people with themselves and with maybe their partners nice and john um cathartic i think love that okay we can go to this dapper gentleman in the kill or no over here sorry on the left oh that's okay i feel like i can't follow that question <laughs> i'm karen from long island and on long island peakers <laughs> we have an entourage um, my question is just a personal question. Um, what's your favorite home-cooked meal, and do you cook it yourself, or does someone else make it for you, like your mom? <laughs> Enchiladas, and no, I make them myself. <laughs> oh, I want to go have some of those. Um, I can't cook, so I have to have other people make stuff for me. Um, I mean, I love any sort of comfort pasta dish, I would say. Uh, Diana Gabaldon's enchiladas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't beat a roast chicken. I was about to say the same. A full, I like cooking like a full roast with all the bits. <laughs> Have some gravy friend. and peas. Yeah. Two different types of potatoes. Says, do you want to go? Yeah, no, I can't think about food, but I was thinking about you and a cocktail. You would prepare for me at yours. That's, that's something interesting. Yeah, an espresso martini for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, this is probably our last question, I'm afraid, so go for it. Sorry. Uh, hi, I'm Jeffrey from Victoria, BC, Canada. Not really dressed up because my family is Mackenzie. So. Wow. <clears throat> So this is a Klinock Henderson Modern Mackenzie. I have two questions, one for Sam. Uh, how can we get some Sassanach in Canada? <laughs> and for the writers, um, any, I really miss the Highland themes. Any ideas of bringing that back? Maybe some haggis making or some caber tossing? I mean, you have lots of trees around. That could be something that you bring into the Americas. I mean, we could hawk Sassnack first. Yes, well, we should. Yes. We should hawk uh, this, yes. Uh, it, Canada, it is coming, yes. It's, uh, as along with a lot of other states as well. We're just, uh, there's a lot Canada, of... Canada is not a state. I mean, states yeah. in, the, in the U.S., oh, okay. yeah, I'm, but I'm, uh, Canada as well. Um, it's, it's the 50. Yeah, it, it's. They are, there are uh, a lot of places we're working on, so it'll be out very, very soon, and I'll make sure you, so. you get some. Me personally? Yes. So. All right. Yeah, he'll get your number later. Um, I got your number. I, I'm not a writer, but I'll speak for the writers. Um, I, you know, listen, I think with the Frasers being at the Ridge and in the colonies, uh, what will be soon, that, um, that we're always trying to bring a little of the Highlands back and everything we do, and certainly the way we start off this year, you'll hopefully see a little bit of that, but um, uh, we're always trying to infuse it in, and, and Scotland is a huge character in our show and continues to be, so I don't know if haggis will come back specifically, but, um, you know, we will think about it. Haggis tossing? Yes, yeah. haggis tossing. <laughs> Well, guys, I'm so sorry, but that's all we have time for. Please join me in saying thank you so much to the cast and creators of Outlander. And thank you to all of you for coming out. Thank you. Thank so you, nice New York. You.
New York Comic Con, how about a big round of applause for our Outlander panel?